How was I supposed to know? Dazai is 16 in these flashbacks? Go to hell. In my last video, I made jokes about shipping Oda and Dazai together, and a lot of you were quick to rush to the comments and let me know that in these flashbacks, Dazai's like 16, and Oda's apparently like 24. In my defense, Dazai hasn't aged a day in like four years. Furthermore, Dazai flirts with anything with a pair of legs on it. And that's only because this show hasn't introduced any amputees yet. Okay, at this point, I just assume anytime Dazai is talking to somebody attractive, it's a new love interest. Well, you know what? You guys are right. I never should have strayed away from my original Kunikita Dazai shipping. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's get back into the show. You're always reading that same book, boy. Hmm? Is it really that good? I swear to God, if this guy's reading No Longer Human by Osamu Dasai, my head's gonna freak out. My brain won't know what to do with that information. I'll, I'm gonna completely trip out. Well, now it all makes sense. Because, because the, the third, third installment is the worst of the worst. Oh, never mind. He's reading Divergent. Just, Just forget, forget about the rest. I can't do that. Why don't you write it then? Who's this mysterious man trying to pressure this kid into writing fan fiction? This guy just wants to find out what happens to Triss and Four. Leave him alone. From my vantage point, you have all the right qualities. Just who are you anyway? Oh, so he actually doesn't know who this guy is? If a guy walked up to me at a cafe and was like, I see you're reading the second installment of a series. You should write the third one. I'd be like, first off, that sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen. I don't know you and you're making me very uncomfortable. And if you don't get away from my table in the next six seconds, I'm going to scream! <laughs> Good, Good to, to see, see you awake, awake Otisaku. Oh my god, he survived? Whoa, what? Everybody told me that this season starts off super sad. What, what, was him dying not the sad bit? He's a naked sword without a scabbard. In time, I have no doubt he'll become the strongest member in the Mafia. But right now, he needs to be taught how to sheath his blade. Are you going to have sex with Octagawa? Listen, sheath his naked blade all you want. Just make sure it happens off screen. Guns are the weapons of fools. They're the fools? Your mullet has frosted tips and you're wearing a bib. You really want to go around talking about who does and doesn't look foolish? Who are you? You may call me Jade. Jade? Dog, I'm gonna be calling you for dinner! Where did this case study of Vanitas character come from, and why is he not on screen every second? First question. The ability you possess. Is it sufficient enough to release our souls from the prison of original sin? To release our souls from the prison? What are you asking him? Oh wow, nice double Lugers. I gotta be honest, that is not what I was expecting to be underneath that cloak. No way is this one of his abilities. Yeah, this man's ability is two guns. Get used to it. Farewell. <laughs> Yo, that was embarrassing, dude. How'd you let your two guns get shot? Are you, Are you able, able to, to walk? walk? What do you think you're doing? Does it even matter if you're just gonna toss him over your shoulder like that? Asking him that question and not waiting for an answer was more insulting than you throwing him over your shoulder. I heard about you from Dazai and came to help. <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks Octagawa is like a total brat? Can somebody just kill this kid already? The only thing he has going for him is his stupid power. Tell me. Does it, does I acknowledge me? No way. This is our intimidating antagonist? Dude just got the wind knocked out of a mid-notice me, senpai. I simply saw a future where you would dodge to the right, so I proceeded to adjust my aim. But it would seem that you saw that future as well. Oh my god, this is a standoff against two guys who can see a little bit into the future. So they're just at a standstill? Neither of them can actually do anything? That's hilarious. What kind of mafia member are you? One that doesn't kill people. Guns are tools for killing people. This guy makes an excellent point. Life is nothing compared to the glory of death!
This matchup is so funny. This is like in Sherlock Holmes, where Sherlock and Moriarty have to play a full game of chess in their minds before either of them can throw a punch. Someday, when I can quit the Port Mafia and become a free man, I'll find a quiet room, one overlooking the sea. Zero chance this guy survives these flashbacks. Dude just signed his death certificate with that sentence. <laughs> So not worth it. Stop this! A bulletproof vest, huh? How many times is this guy gonna fake die? That's the second time this show tried to trick me into thinking he was dead, and this is his third episode. How long do you think this conflict will last? Mimic's army aside, their leader's ability is a nuisance. Easy, Dazai, you're standing right next to a guy with the exact same ability. Dazai's just like, oh, oh, but not you. Come on, you know I don't mean that. I, I got tons of friends with that ability. Of course, where else? Hey, you guys. I started without you. Oh, what the hell, show? In the first episode of this season, didn't Oda say that that would be the last time the three of them would be seen together in this bar? Right? That's exactly what he said. Oda literally told me this wouldn't happen. Cases have proven to be quite rare. You know, I'm really not supposed to be here telling you to any of this. I know, that's what I'm saying. I'll have to go underground for the time being. That's cute. You think we're gonna let you walk out of here alive just like that? Oh right, I forgot Dazai's in the Mafia right now. For a second I was like, Jesus, Dazai's threatening to kill this dude? And then I was like, oh yeah, there's a point to all these flashbacks. This is how it's always been for me. Everything worth wanting is lost the moment I obtain it. And nothing I pursue is worth the cost of prolonging this life. Jesus Christ, that's heavy. Hey, come on, buddy, it's all right. You want to go attempt a suicide? That always cheers you up. No. Hey! Oh, nice dual frying pan technique. No wonder you got killed. What, were you gonna scramble the bad guys to death? Most of your customers are Mafia members. You don't keep a shotgun under that counter? Uh, suck, suck it up! up! <laughs> a map. That is the most map-ass map I have ever seen. That's like a straight-up topography map. How's he supposed to read that? That's like when you get a treasure map in a video game and it's like just some obscure corner of a castle or something and you're like, yep. Oh yeah, I'll never find this shit. Oh my god, they just blew up the van full of children. Look, seeing a van full of stolen kids is never a good sign. Um, but typically, you know, they don't explode. Somewhere in the distance I heard someone screaming. Eventually I realized the reason my throat hurt was because I was the one who was screaming. Oh, that was sick. That was like one of the coolest inner monologues I've ever heard. Not anymore. I can't write a story anymore. This is like the perfect reason to write a story. You're telling me you just had your best friends kidnapped and murdered and you don't immediately want to write a crime thriller about it? If anything, this is the perfect reason to stop being in the mafia and become an author. I mean, come on, man, that's just a waste of a good murder. Brief episode transition, if you guys like what you're seeing here and you want to get more content not found anywhere else, make sure you consider subscribing to my Patreon. There you'll get access to exclusive reaction videos and access to my own private Discord server. Until on top of that, you'll also get access to all of the live stream VODs I've recorded and will record in the future. But if Patreon's not really your thing and you still want more content, make sure you consider subscribing to my second channel, Honestly Brutal. There I upload video game and movie analysis videos that aren't really the same sort of content you see here. But they're like comedy analysis videos, so if you like my content, you'll definitely like them. Aside from that, leaving a like and a comment on this video helps out a ton. So now that you know all the ways you can help support my channels, Let's move on. Good night, Kosuke. Oh, this is so hype. Oda's entering his emo era and I'm so ready for it. Dude just loaded two magazines into his leather cuffs. Guy's either about to go on a murderous rampage or a My Chemical Romance cover tour. Good night, you. Look, I know you is a very common name in Japan, but I do like to imagine he just forgot that kid's name. Good night, Katsumi.
Good night, Sakura. Good night, third kid. I know what you're thinking right now, but you can't do it. Even if you did, it wouldn't bring the kids back. I don't know, it might bring the kids back. This is a pretty magical ass world, you know? Like, if we're being honest, who knows? I thought that being around it would help me find my own. My dream was to become a writer. I like how Daz Eyes just like, oh, okay, cool, I guess we're talking about your dream now. I was afraid that if I ever killed again, I'd lose that future forever. Dude, I'm telling you, killing people can only improve your writing skills. Imagine reading a crime thriller by a guy who has actually killed people. <laughs> this is the last flashback episode, right? Like, I want to go back to seeing somebody from season one. <laughs> Hey, hey, what's, what's a, a big, big idea, idea, huh? Somebody other than Ronpo. I, I am, am the, the best, best detective, detective the world has ever known. You'll take me seriously once, once you experience, experience my ability. ability. Rompo really never has anything better to do than brag about himself, does he? In all honesty, Rompo is growing on me. I low-key love his voice actor, and he's like, just the right type of annoying to be endearing. Let's see. I know, I know the, the two, two of us have only just met, met. but it's, it's very, very unwise to go where you're headed right now. I like how Rompo puts on the glasses and is just like, just wait until I show this jerk my ability. Oh, you're going to kill people. Yo, an assassin who can predict his own death is such a cool idea. And you know, honestly, it even make for a great book. But, but if, if it, it dies, but if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 24. These two are Christian now? Nice, you guys can start your own little church group. You can sit around discussing the Bible while you both predict how the other one's gonna kill you. Oh my god, this is literally the chess match thing I was talking about. I do wish these weren't flashbacks because I know Oda's gonna die at the end of this. No chance Oda survives the end of this episode. The show's been grooming me for his death since the beginning of this season. Our organization would benefit immensely with this in your possession. A gifted business permit. Oh no, not a gifted business permit. Oh geez, didn't realize we were dealing with true evil over here. They have matching bracelets! Guys, come on, screw all this fighting shit. I say you two start a band. My dream was to become a writer. A man told me long ago that was my true calling. He gave me a very rare book. Yeah, and he told you it sucked. Then why don't you write it? Just before the missing section in question. Oh my god, wait, is this old man the author of the book? I'm gonna be furious if that's the case. Not because it's a lame twist, but I'm gonna be very upset it took me until now to realize. My name is Suseki Natsume. That's right. He had the same name as the author of the story I loved. God damn it. That's so obvious. I'm so angry. You were perfect. Even your very last shot was sublime. Oh, did Oda not die? Oh, nope, there we go. Whether you're on the side who kills people, or on the side that protects them, you won't find what you're seeking. Jesus Christ, everybody's so fucking sad in this show. This started off as such a happy show about an unloved orphan teaming up with a suicidal... Wait a minute. If both sides are the same to you, then become a good man. Protect the vulnerable. How about some orphans? Oh yeah, because helping out orphans worked out so great with you. Here's some better advice. Kill yourself. Stay away from orphans. You son of a bitch! You weren't hurt at all! I have a feeling you'd like him. <laughs> Will I be able to save people? And thus starts Dazai's time in the detective agency and ends our time in these flashbacks. I'm assuming Oda's real death is the sad bit everybody was warning me about. The only problem with that is I'm so cynical that just by virtue of these being flashbacks, 
this guy was dead on arrival for me. On top of that, I'd already felt pretty sad when he had his little monologue saying he fuzzed up in the second episode, and I'd come to terms with the fact that he died then. So then, when it turns out he didn't, and then he gets shot, and then I briefly was like, oh my god, he kills himself for Atagawa, and then he doesn't die there, and then he dies here at the end. I've, like, all of my sympathies had already been drained out by then. I am very excited to get back to the present day. I just, like, generally don't love flashback stuff. But it is unfortunate that Oda died. Because that guy's so cool, and I love his ability. I love how it's not broken or OP because it just keeps him alive. Like, he can't just see any future. That's super cool. I really like his look. I really like his personality. Definitely sucks he's out of the cast now. Thankfully, I do like the rest of the cast, though, so I'm excited for more. Let me know what you guys thought of this little uh, mini flashback arc in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time. But now I always seem to freeze the things I love.